So another video, another day, because um, I upload every day, make a video every day, because I do it for you guys. Aren't you lucky? And you can see I'm wearing this scarf because I'm freezing cold. It's freezing cold in the UK. Don't know if you've heard, but there's a storm called Bertie. Great. Sounds so brilliant, doesn't it? And I've got the heating on in here, but I'm just doing this for comfort. Anyway, so what do I want to talk about today? Well, I've noticed this thing where certain Linux channels and certain Linux attitudes are sort of contradictory. You might have noticed this as well. Um, mainly around breaking Linux, breaking your configuration, breaking your desktop environment, breaking something in Linux. And it's usually sort of seen as necessary, but bad or dangerous. Ooh, dangerous. It's dangerous to break or run a command. So scary. Well, actually, no. Under the right circumstances, and I say most circumstances, if you know what you're doing, but not doing as some of these videos say, you should be breaking Linux, you should be breaking your configs, you should be breaking effectively everything, especially if you're new. And it's sort of like seen as something, ah, oh, well, I did it, but no, you shouldn't do it, which is just stupid. And I'll, I'll sort of go into why. Well, I will go into why. And if you've watched my videos already, you'll know that I'm now notorious for breaking things, going all over the place before I get something right. And it's not that I haven't done this stuff before, I just can't remember and I don't care. It's just like, who cares? If I get it wrong, I get it wrong. It's just another reminder, or a prompt or a learning experience because most of the things you break aren't going to break your system permanently, are recoverable, are not a big deal, do not worry about it. It's a good thing. You need to break things to learn. And to learn is to get something wrong to fix it and understand why. And you can only do that by breaking things. Everybody should break everything. Now, if you're going to be running Ubuntu and all these desktop environments as well that hold in your hand, well, okay, that's fine. You know, I did the video about the different Linux desktops that you can use and if you just want Linux Mint to hold your hand that's fine I'm not gonna judge you don't do it I'm not gonna judge you but to be honest you're not gonna learn you're not gonna learn Linux you're not gonna learn really computing and this is what it comes down to if you want to know how things fundamentally work so you can custom something to your personal use which depends on what you do could be important could not be you need to break everything, really, almost everything. So you think you're probably going, oh, but James, if I break something, oh, I could destroy my workflow. I might damage my system. It might be a security flaw. Well, you do it this way. This is how you should do it. So, well, first of all, let's just break this down. I've probably, oh, gone on too long. You know how my intros are. I've probably gone too long, but it's important to get the premise right. So first things first user space so your username you're logging in you're not logging in as root most of this stuff doesn't matter just break the configs do what you need to do it really doesn't matter and so let's do an example you had one recently right so excuse the mess whatever so you had this one recently right um you probably saw on one of my videos i I basically tried to change the border to like a couple of pixels because I wanted the border window, this blue thing here. Oh, God, it's so annoying. I hate cameras. Anyway, this blue th blue border, I wanted to make it a couple of pixels. I have it on other setups. It's usually a couple of pixels. But when I did it, it broke i3 window manager, right? Does that matter? No, of course not. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna break it now. Don't worry. I'm gonna break it now. So it looks looks bad anyway because it's got oh, I don't know if you can see it. It's got like um red syntax, which basically means it's wrong. I mean it does again, it works, it works, but so but if I change this to one handed guys, change this to two, quit that, 
and then if I um, peak hill, I free, this is probably going to break. Uh, start hex. There you go. Broken. Broken. Oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, so oh, I'm going to have to put this phone down for a second. Bear with me. Well, I just exit. You see that? And then I can just go into the config on the TTY and I can just change that back. <laughs> It's just, you know, look, here you go. Look, doing it real time, CD, um, what's it, dot config, 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 uh, i3, i3, uh, vim, oh, can you believe I'm actually doing this? Ah, there you go, change that to one. Right, quit, uh, rx. Oh, and look, it works again. Perfect. See, I learned something. I learned you can't put two on the pixel. Basically, that's all broken anyway, and it's not working perfectly. But it, again, it doesn't matter. Now I've got a working system. If it really came down to it, you'd need to reverse a change. But you might have learned something. You know, sometimes the Arch Wiki and all these things aren't going to have what you need. But it's not. that's not going to be a security flaw, okay? It's not going to destroy your system. You're not removing anything really you're just having to use a tty if you, you could break the tty but you're not going to break it in your user thing you know just, again so don't worry about it don't worry about it so the next thing is well running um power user permissions or super user permissions okay so this is this is where people get scared of I'm running sudo, I could do something, permanently damage my system. That's true. That's true. You could. You're probably not going to, but you could. So, how do you get around that? Well, do what I do. I have a virtual machine. Okay, this is where I do my videos, because I'm testing stuff. Just test it in a virtual machine. Run sudo. This is a virtual machine. Run sudo, whatever sudo you know whatever and break stuff it's not going to break your actual running computer it's just going to break your virtual machine this is what vm vert manager this is vert manager i'll put the links put the links in the description for like virtual box and all this stuff it's it's easy you know virtual box is easiest this is vert manager's a bit more set up but just use virtual box there you go you've got virtual system you can just do anything you can remove everything you want break everything test everything you want it's not going to matter and then you can see how things work and you can then try it on your own system so therefore what else can you do well if it really came down to it so you can't maybe you haven't got enough space i mean this is an old computer you probably got enough space maybe you can't use i don't know virtual box or vert manager this is what you should always do anyway. If I can get this stupid thing out of my pocket. Right. This. This has a backup of my main system, okay? Back up your main system, use time shift. I'll put it in the description. I've got a way to automate my backups that are pretty good, I think, pretty good way. Maybe I'll do a video on that soon. But this one, Holds time shift, right? Time shift's a piece of software that backs up the actual system. That's good. Do that. Then you can, it wouldn't even matter if you made an, had an accident and broke the system on your main system that wasn't a virtual machine. Okay. And then this is for my files, basically my home user files. So, I don't know, videos, music, whatever. So, again, I could accidentally delete my whole... I've done it before. I've, I've actually accidentally deleted my whole stuff, I think. So I've just got the backup. Always back up your stuff. It's simple. Just automate it. I've got a way to automate. I will do videos. Maybe I'll do it very soon. Maybe I'll do it in this week. So none of this is a big deal. Just, just break, break Linux. It's really your opportunity to learn. You can't do this kind of stuff with Windows. You can, but you're, you've you got the source code. You've got the config files. You can... all. Use open source software for this. You can do it. It's no problem. Just 
break Linux, break it as much as you want, whatever you're doing, you will learn much faster. You will learn in a real sense, not just theory, in practice. Keep backups, use virtual machines, whatever you've got to do to do that. It will make your life easier. You see on my videos, I don't care. I, I Years of experience and I just break stuff all the time. I, it's just what it is. It's not. And I learn. I remember and I prompt myself. So just do that. Anyway, I've probably gone on long enough I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about this. Um, yeah, oh, that's the other thing. Last little addendum, is that the right word? At the end here. The other thing is people go, oh, you should never run a command unless you know exactly what it does. Yeah, that's kind of true, but use a virtual machine. Break it in the virtual machine. You, you're probably not going to, you know, leak any security flaw or something. I don't know. Again, just do it in a virtual machine. If you're really that worried about it, do it in a virtual machine. Then you can see what happens. And then you can look it up online or look it up online and test it in a virtual machine. So, yeah, you should know what you're running, but you can only know what you're doing and what you're running. And you're only going to understand when you break things. It's just life. You make mistakes. You fix the mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. Anyway, learn from your mistakes. Break everything. Vote YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. You know what to do. That's it. Have a good rest of your day. Why am I saying that? Whatever.